telling uh, this young lady I was talking about, I said, back when I was in high school, 17 years old, say, and there was, a, there, this is a true story, there was a pretty girl named, well, we're not starting at this moment, are we? What? We what? just keep rolling. Oh, okay. I was just going to say there's a pretty girl named Rosalie who kind of liked me. So what you did in those days, uh, I asked her brother Savino, is it okay if I go out, <laughs> I, go out with Rosalie? What was I going to do with Rosalie? Go to a movie. Then after the movie, you go to the, uh, the coffee shop and you had French fries and a Coke. That's how innocent it was. So I was with Rosie. I'm going to use you as an example. We're sitting in this very dark movie, and, and you know, you put your arm around her like this, never expecting to do anything more than that. So she wanted to encourage me, and she said, Rich, um, you can touch me, if that's her words, <laughs> if you want. I won't say anything to my family. That's just what she said, Daryl. I won't say anything to my family. Now, I wasn't stupid. <laughs> Even though my hormones at that age were saying, go ahead and touch her and do what you want. She just said she's not going to tell him. But I knew when she got home, that family would be pumping her, the uncle Luigi and everybody else. And she'd break down and say, yeah, he yeah. kissed me or he did something. And the next day, my legs are broken. So um, I didn't do anything. It was very frustrating. I was better off not going out with her. Be a real soprano. That's right. You've been a real soprano. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. But I kind of liked those days. I don't know. I kind of liked it. Family was tight, you know, everybody together. Um, cousins and, you know, it's the way it is. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready when you are. Okay. Hi, this is Rich Misabney. I was invited here on the Daryl Winston show. Uh, because uh, he knew he was having Sharon Rich here, uh, my guest, our guest, because she's done the definitive works on Nelson Eddy. And uh, here, here's one of the books. I didn't realize that you, you said you did s several books on him? I did several books on Nelson and Jeanette. And Jeanette. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if I haven't done the research or anything. Anybody else in the country has done definitive works on those two? Well, there have been a few biographies about one or the other, but um, mine was the first one that kind of just said everything, laid it on the table, and, you know, let out all the secrets that have been covered up for decades now, about their lives. Now, Sharon, you're a young woman. Right. <laughs> uh, where would you get the interest to dig into something like Nelson Eddy, which uh, he, he was at the end of his career in the early 60s, uh, of course, he, they were big in the movies and all that, as you well know, and right. everybody else here in the studio knows. Uh, but why would a young person like you have such an interest in him? Well, I didn't originally. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, so I was an original Valley girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in my honor society in high school, we mm -hmm. helped out at the motion picture home that was nearby in Woodland Hills. And living in retirement at the motion picture home was Jeanette McDonald's older sister, Blossom Rock. Okay. Now, you might remember her. She was a character actress. She played the grandmother in the TV series The Addams Family. She was oh, okay. with the wild hair. Okay. And she also acted under the name Marie Blake in the 30s and 40s. And she was in the Dr. Kildare um, I'm film I'm sure I'd series. know her face. You You'd know, know her face. Yeah. She was around in, in over 100 films. Ah. Um, anyway, I got assigned to help Blossom at an event. They were putting on a show, and she was doing a song and dance number, and I was her helper. And we started to talk. We hit it off. Um, she was very cool and very hip for, you know, an elderly person. Mm -hmm. And we became very good friends. And over the period of time, I learned that Jeanette McDonald was her older sister and that apparently Jeanette had had this romance with Nelson Eddy that, the public was no, not aware nobody of. Knew. Nobody knew. Well, I finally asked Blossom about it, and she said, yes, it was true. And about six months later, I started UCLA, and I wanted to be a film history major, and I was going to write a book. I always knew I was going to write about Hollywood. So my one of my sisters had met Cary Grant. She said, so she said, why don't you write a book about Cary Grant? And I said, okay. I didn't know anything about Cary Grant, but I thought it was a good place to start. And I mentioned it to Blossom, and she said, no, do a book about my sister. 
And I said, well, I don't know anything about your sister. So she just started handing me photos. She opened her phone book and pointed out people that I should call and just started putting me in touch with people, had them come to see her, and I began to talk to them. And that's really how it started. How long did it take you to finish up this book? Well, this particular book took about 20 years of research, and it took me about five to six months to actually sit down and write it. But by that point, I it was the computer era, so I had several databases of information, sometimes a daily, you know, schedule of Nelson was here, Jeanette was here, Blossom was here, Louis B. Mayer was here, you know, because a lot of times I had anecdotes that somebody said, oh, it was around 1938, and I didn't know how to place that story, so I had to look through the timeline to try to pinpoint it as carefully as possible. And the reason I was so careful to document it was that what I was writing about was very, very scandalous. And, you know, who would think that a romance from 50 years ago was something that would be make people so excitable? But it was, because it was covered up so well by the studios. It was a horrific scandal. Yeah. Well, yeah. like Clark Gable, I believe, and Loretta Young had a baby together. Yeah, I met her, Judy Lewis. Oh, really? She looks just like Clark Gable. She and I did a book signing together at a lunch in Beverly oh, Hills, and I sat there looking at her, and I said, Judy, I don't know how you grew up looking in the mirror every day and didn't see Clark Gable staring back at you. She said, well, I asked my mom, and my mom said, no, he's not my father, so I believed my mother, you know? Isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, but that was the case. I, you may wonder, what am I doing here? You know, Daryl Winston, is he, he can interview and do this. He knows Sharon, of course, uh, and all. But the thing is, I think maybe I have something unique here in this studio here. There are uh, some people a little bit older than I am and some younger. Uh, in 1962, I was with a very strong uh, suburban newspaper in this area called the Northern Virginia Sun. And uh, I... I was the entertainment reviewer, very young guy, I have to admit, uh, but I got the job, it's a whole story in itself how I got it, but nevertheless, I was the entertainment critic, and uh, I was uh, assigned to the Blue Room of Shoreham Hotel, maybe some of you folks remember that wonderful place, it's still there, but it doesn't have the big name acts, and in, I don't know if it was the summer of, of 62 or not, Nelson Eddy and Gail Sherwood. Gail Sherwood, right. you know. Uh, she took over for, for Jeanette. Jeanette. Yeah. Uh, and they were at the Blue Room, and I was a critic then, a young one, of course, and uh, I was sitting there, and I remember clearly Nelson Eddy was sitting here, and uh, I was just in my early 20s, and... Uh, he was gracious enough. This is what I couldn't get over him. I mean, I did. I was just a kid. He was gracious. He talked to me as if I were an important guy, and uh, whatever it was. And then he and Gail went on the floor and sang and everything. And then there was a party, as they often did upstairs at the Shawm Hotel, in one of the suites, uh, a reception uh, for the press and a few other people. And I was there talking to him, and he was so very nice. She was too nice, Gail. But I was impressed what a nice man he was to talk to me uh, at all. And I never forgot that. So uh, I don't know how many. I just want to ask this audience. Maybe it's not on camera now. Anybody uh, talk to uh, Nelson Eddy in your time uh, for any reason? So it was a fluke thing that I had that uh, uh, benefit. Um, you want to tell us, uh, Sharon, some things. I know from that little bit of experience I had at the Shore Motel, I thought he's a great guy. I know nothing else about him, really, in that sense, other than what you put in the book. Give us some, some uh, idea of what kind of man. I think he, you're correct. He was a nice guy. Most people I interviewed had only kind things to say about him, Good. and I think that that was part of his problem when he went to Hollywood, because he came from the opera stage, mm -hmm. and he was a you know, a pure singer. He didn't want to go Hollywood. He didn't want to be part of that crowd. He wanted to come to Hollywood and make a couple of films and get some more people to come to his concerts and then go back to the East Coast. Mm. But he was paired up with Jeanette McDonald and he fell in love with Jeanette. And that's, that's what, you know, tricked him up. He ended up, because of the roller coaster life that he lived with Jeanette, that the mm. public was not always aware of, although. You know, I can't say that 
the public didn't know that. People in town, in Hollywood, knew what was going on. It was just a secret and everybody respected it. All the gossip columnists knew, etc. Um, the problem was that now